Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. I'm going to look at the complete Otomo Works keyframes this, this episode. But a reminder to everybody at home that we are working cartoonists. And the best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the books that we make. Ed Piscor's Red Room Trigger Warnings and Red Room The Antisocial Network are in stores now. These are collections of the first two seasons of Red Room, completely self-contained. So whichever volume you bump into first is the perfect place to start your Red Room reading. My latest Deadly Squirrel Live Street Angel collection is back in print from Image Comics after being away for almost a year. So if you missed it the first time, pick it up now, no excuses. And The Plain Janes, about a bunch of outsider high school artists that create chaos as they make art in their small, quiet suburban town. But man, Ed, this is what I wanted to see you bring home from Tokyo. Otomo, the complete works. Um, 23 refers to, I guess, the, the volumes volume aren't being printed in sequential order. Correct. So that's exciting because it means there's a whole lot planned. Yes. Um, this is animation from Akira, layouts and keyframes. So 20, 21 and 22 are the storyboards. It makes sense. And those are things that we've had glimpses of in the past. But man, the first thing that strikes me is... This book feels good. Yeah. You know, it's it's soft edges, but it's it's heavy, it's thick. We've got about an inch and a half here. And um, once you start opening this... Oh, near and dear to my heart, that fluorescent <laughs> pink color. But once you start uh, opening this thing up and digging in a little bit, you see some instructions on how should we look at this? Yes. And uh, as you can see at home, this is a horizontally formatted because it's it's drawings from animation. So we all know what a television screen or a movie screen looks like. You can kind of see it outlined here. Yeah. Details on some of the technical pieces that we may see yeah. as we flip through production art. And I ran Google Translate yes. over Topman with the uh, augmented reality to, to, you know, to, to give you the English. And he basically is asking people like, I know this is weird, but you got to flip through this. English style like so like it starts oh okay. it starts back here with the flip like this and then uh and then flip it and read uh he talks about the makeup of the cells and this part here if google translate like because you know you their syntax is different than ours so you have to kind of contextualize like sure. from from the stuff that you have uh what i was able to glean if it's correct is that um this is a collection and this is volume one of three there's going to be three of these books. It's going to be fantastic. Um, this is from his personal collection of the stuff that he kept. He didn't necessarily draw all these pieces. He contributed to a bunch, and he certainly did the storyboards for everything. But this is from his personal collection of stuff that he held on to. And, you know, as well as I do, like, you can't, you can't keep it all. You know, we're talking a quarter million, half a million drawings. Right. Like there's not enough space in Japan to to, <laughs> to to hold it all, and and they threw so much out. You know, they they included animation cells with the laser discs here in the states. If you bought a laser disc, you get an animation cell. You know, like they were just giving this stuff away. I think that Joe that dude Joe Peacock, who put together the Art of Akira exhibit, has his whole collection on loan at the at the um you know Academy for Motion Pictures. I think that's how he started. Like, he just was fucking buying up those laser discs, and it's like, dude, I have a complete piece of artwork from, from my favorite movie, and all it costs is, you know, whatever this laser disc costs. Like, just buy up a million laser discs. That's amazing to put, think of. Put together your first chunk of your collection. Such a cool book. So there you see, like, a title page, right? As we uh, follow his instructions and start in the back English style. Um, I don't know if we've ever flipped a book like this, Ed. So it'll be a little, uh, little interesting to see this go. And it varies. You see, you have you have very rough sketches. These I'm in awe of. Yeah. And I just looked through this for I don't know a minute before we did the video, so I haven't seen most of this stuff. But the thing that blows me away is how loose these are, and at the same time, like how accurate, yeah. you know, and, and how perfect they are, where like it's one line and it is like a sketch line, looks like it was dashed out super fast, and yet you get expressions like that mouth, everything is there. And that's just this piece. Like, it's not fair to say th they are because because there are tight ones. And this is that one yeah, that, right. that is just so amazing where you see all of this all of this stuff, three, four layers of cells, and it is on the screen for two seconds. This is on the screen for seconds. And we see people in like the uh, Criterion Collection, like the special, they have that like beveled 
fucking stylus with the one hair brush for the lights in the in the in the buildings, you know? Look at the intricacy of that. I bet Jeff Darrow loves this page. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, dude. When this came out, we were all gonna go to the Kino Kunia bookstore before it opened to wait so that like when the doors opened, we were gonna be the first guys to go in there and scoop up copies because we were just like, how is this not going to sell out, you know? Like, this is f incredible. When you see this, this is, this. these are like concept, you know, concept sketches, right? Because, like, there's not, you know, it's not animation or anything. This is this is clearly a sketch. Right, but, but like, it's it's the first drawing. It's, like, so, like, layout. Keyframes. It's, it's the layout. Mm -hmm. So then you do that, and then you got to go over on your light box, and then you have, if you notice, this isn't, these are not inked. It's not ink. It's it's xeroxed from very very tight pencil. Yes. So the keyframe is like after that sketch part, then you go in with that super fucking sharp pencil and you basically ink. You put the final line down that gets xeroxed onto the cells for for ink for for paint. Wow. Here's one of the things that that uh that really fascinates me, man. Um as we as we keep going because like he says this is from his collection right this, this is, is one of those drawings that i was talking about where it's like one line yeah and it and it's perfect uh-huh yeah even like, though it's like a goggles. rough sketch yeah but somehow it's perfect yeah it's like perfect goggles but like you know what this scene is and it comes from otomo's own collection but look he doesn't have the full cycle dude of of like the most iconic most copied you know, scene in, in modern animation, he only kept a couple pieces, but not like even the iconic shot of the screech. You, you know what I'm saying? I do know. Yeah. Like, yeah. If this is from his collection. So, so like, it made me think like, did some motherfucker get those in a laser disc? Maybe this isn't all of his collection either. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, may maybe he's saving that one for an A or a B or something, maybe. All that said, it's like you would put that, because you know, this is cut A, and then that it's is, like amount of true. So then you flip it, and it's B. So it's not going to be in here again. So it's like, I, I don't think he has it. Because that would be the piece that you do keep. In, 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 you do show that off in the book. Oh, man, look at those dogs. They're so lively. Tom's yeah. wagon. Yeah. That's how animation will work, too. Like, there are guys who just, like, specialize in animal yeah. anatomy or, like, smoke. I just, I, I, the life of these drawings is blowing my mind. That's, that's the key piece that, that you take away for, for, like, your practice is, like, make it, make your lines count. Yeah, seriously. And then precision, whenever you get into some of this stuff. Absolutely. It's, just, it's hard to believe these are human hands drawing this stuff. Totally. And this is the 80s. There's just no fake in the funk, man. This is like drawing stuff. Look at that dude trying to get like, like selling you know, like, okay, this is the start. This is the end. Or this is the start. This is the end. And then you got to fill that out. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the animation visual language. The other thing with, um, the other thing with, uh, drawing for animation, that's a little bit different than comics. Cause you could take a flyer on a panel in comics and kind of like, just kind of like ask something out. But there's that, term of like that process of like drawing through something where you need to like understand what's on the side that you don't see because maybe the character has to turn and you do see it so there's precision in that and just like getting all the exact lines where they should be in like a 3d space on a 2d surface yeah and i feel like we've had um conversations with jeff darrow about that totally you know he, like, he like having to have that, that stuff work like it, it's got to hold up for that reason, if yeah. you turn it, if you end up seeing that underside, the backside, whatever it is. Interesting, the uh, the amount of the dogs here. And you wonder if that's a personal thing, if that's something that Otomo felt great about or learned or, you know, something that really spoke to him in, in some way there. Yeah. So you could just kind of blast through these because we'll see those on the flip mm -hmm. side. And some of this stuff is like scenes, you know, so like, oh yeah, this is real cool. It would be like a pan shot. So they will kind of like add paper. You'll see ones where they even uh, just like tape an extra piece of paper. Yeah, that's really cool. Again, that, that precise line, like these, it's, it's neat to go from like the sketches and the roughs 
and then get to see like the more detailed version. Look at that one point perspective. And by the way, like that's a rough, <laughs> even though it's hyper detailed. Yeah. But I guess you've got to have that level of detail if you're going to have a scene that's that complex. Amazing. That looks like your um, high contrast, you know, like a photocopy. Yeah. It's interesting how these pencil lines translate. Learned a lot about the uh, how important the photocopier was in animation in the past, whenever we did that Alex Toth, how to animate. Yeah. Refocus those. Mm. Yeah. Um, someone in the comments uh, said that, uh, on Twitter, Otomo said that most of these are the pieces that he actually drew, save for a few that uh, that he wasn't sure about. Yeah, these action shots are really breathtaking. <sighs> and also the long shots, just really like as establishing shots, they're so wild. Yeah, because the final paper isn't that much bigger, really. Right. It's like this is about type and paper, and, and uh, animation paper is about legal size, like your legal tablet size. There goes K. For as detailed as I think of his art, it's kind of cool to see whenever it's broken down into, you know, a figure yeah. or a sketch. It's yeah. really awesome. Like it's you're almost seeing a different version of his art. It's instructive. Like, there's a lot there. You could tell that, like, he's seeing in 3D, you know, like, the draperies go in that direction. I also love whenever you'll see, like, shadow that's just drawn. Like, yep. here, here's my line of where the shadow is going to be. You know, we've all seen that in animation where it's just, like, a darker, almost a... You know, a second color, you're seeing it right here, you know, on the sides here. This is so hard because you know that back is probably like vibrating up and down in between every, like every new cell. It just to, cre to create that kind of thing. Again, what a stunning book, the way this is assembled. Yeah. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into it. And typically what would happen with these complete Otomos is that um, two would come out at a time. And it'll be like an, a pink one and an orange one. Like the, the orange stuff is like the, uh, the older works. And then the pink ones are the kind of like the newer stuff. But this round, just this book came out because it's so expensive. And then these will be the next round. Getting a lot of this old, this old codger. Do you know whether they plan on doing English releases of this stuff? It was said, like there was English releases of the press release for the Complete Otomo. But good luck. Good luck, man. I don't see it happening anytime soon. So, like, you know we needed one of these, where you got the background, and then you got Tetsuo in the little chamber. Ah, <laughs> that's so good. You know we needed one of those. Look at the perspective of, mm -hmm. like, trying to get that face, because that is a hard angle to draw, especially in something that you're making up. It's not like Tetsuo's face is something that you could reference. Right. Look at the perspective. Right? Dude, how hard that is. Like, like, where do you put that neck? That's where that concept of drawing through has to be bulletproof. That's wild. What drawing? Ooh, and you could learn anatomy here, like how that knee and, <laughs> that, and that IT band or whatever fits into the quads. I would love to know what prompted him, like what he kept. You know, why, yeah. why, he, why this panel or this page right you know what stuff meant what's this one jimmy must be a uh pan yeah wow. you see the tape and stuff this is another one where like as detailed as this is that's your rough right yeah let's just show it off to the people a little better yes We'll do the uh, the animation scan. Follow the animation scan on <laughs> right, our video. Right. The paper feels so rich. Yeah, probably not not far different than the uh, stuff they drew on. Yeah, I would assume. Interesting to see like doing folds and clothes and stuff. Yeah. At this kind of a simplified sketch style, and yet still you see the wrinkles and folds seem to be. Pretty good. Very believable. So much acting. And then you got your promo pieces. I, uh, I, I love these kinds of shots where it's just like a, um, you know, it's just the, I don't know, the backgrounds and stuff. Right. 
I'm a big fan of that stuff. I've seen some zines like that. I think animators I know who have uh, maybe kept their background drawings, you know, and reproduced them in a little zine. Right. Against the NDA, probably. But um, I love seeing that. There was some. This is neat. I yeah. love this. Get Again, those cycle. colors just marking your shadows. Yep. You know, because, like, what is that even? It wasn't a complete. That's not your final drawing. No. But it's so detailed and tight. I guess it's moving towards it, you know? You know, like that kind of background. Big fan of that. Yeah. So much acting. Like, that's that's a whole skill to get these, like, drawings. So, because, like, drawing the human figure in animation is probably the toughest kind of character to draw. Right. You know, you hear, you hear Bruce Tim talk about how, like, you know what, man? Alex Toth, his designs ain't really that good for animation. You know, he said it. Because you got just too many moving parts. There's another one of those one pointers. Just marvelous drawing. I wonder what the yellow paper, it's probably just something, could have been anything. Yeah. You know, like arbitrary that that's what they ended up with a stack of that. He, nah, he explains like there's oh, a purpose really? for the book and, and, but it, it, it's just not clear when you use Google translate. Got it. I love all the bike drawings too. This is so sweet. Dude, was that cityscape? Freehand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, I bold perspective. Wow. <laughs> Just showing off, right, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, that's why I kept Look that Look at that little run. That's, that's hard. great. Hard as fuck. Oh, dude. We all know that sequence. There it is. Oh, man, it's cool to see the sketches, and then you get to see, like, the cell. The animation cell version of it. Yeah. Wow, so much energy in Boom. there. Boom. That's great. Catch and wreck. I like those pieces too, you know, where it's a face. Like the only piece yeah. of that must have been the face moving or that right. was the most important part. Right. There's something about seeing these drawings in that kind of state that really I find, I don't know, it's not what I'm used to. Right. But Jimmy, that's not all. Start going through some of that, man. More of that freehand uh, backgrounds. There's your acting. Yeah. And see, that that would be a final thing that would turn into a uh, a cell. Yeah? Yeah. I think so. When you start getting the colors, man, like, you're, you're, you're getting there. Because I have that Tetsuo joint that, that's about at that level. I can't even tell, you know... Well, this one is, is clearly a sketch. A sketch. Yeah. But so much of the stuff... Especially like the smaller figures, you know, they're so tight. You know, like something like that. It's so tight. Yeah, yeah, but when you get that, of course. <laughs> it's cool, too, how um, I guess that's what a keyframe is, but you can see the animation as you flip. Yeah. Several of these that have, like, the sequences. Yeah, there's a lot of sequences, but it's just hard to flip. Like, just the conceit that had to be done to get this book to happen. It's just not not as flippable as I think uh, Otomo would have liked, probably. Probably easier, too. If, like, having a camera up there makes it a little bit more of a challenge for us. Yeah. You know, if you have it in your hands, I think uh, just for your own eye, it probably works a little better. Yeah, not too much. But you know what? Fuck that. Like, you know, look at the drawing. You know yeah, what I'm seriously. saying? It's okay really like that yeah it that just feels like, all like that. classic comics kind of composition stuff we'd see in action comics here right wow a crowd a lot of bodies man what, what's harder than a running figure a lot of, yeah 20 of them <laughs> or running at you believe me running sideways much easier than running towards you yes sir Jeez. it's those hips man you got to figure out how hips work little proportions maybe the k is k yeah you know, whenever you're doing something like this, too, that's kind of a relatively mundane, I just admire it whenever you can nail that and make it look beautiful. Yeah. You know, like even this. Pans. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. All that shit. I'm glad that he includes a bunch of that stuff, too. There's a nice variety of material here. You say there's another volume like this coming? Two more. Man, whenever they go precise and do, like, finished drawings, it shocks me. I've seen some of the Disney stuff like that too, and it's the same deal where it's 
the finest line. Yeah. And it's just this perfect, whether it's a straight line, an arm, a, you know, an arc. And you just, I don't know how you do it with one line. Right. We're going to get a good sew with her in a second. There's just that, that hold where it's just the lips talking. You know, like with these, I wonder about color. Are there color codes? You yeah. Know, like you're drawn with some color pencils on these. So beautiful. I really like production art. She's going to get a sell in a second. I feel like seeing that much of a of her is indicative of this was a sequence that meant a lot to Atoma. Uh-huh. You know, and, and why not? Like all that expression on her face. And these are like non-repro pencils, man, because they just don't show up in this stage, you know? And look at that, dude. Like, the pillow up front is its own animation because there's going to be tension as her. She moves her head, so that yeah, has to animate. Yeah, In that color, you know, in the color sketches, you would see those highlights or whatever kind of spelled out and the tension around them. Yep. Wow. So cool. What a book. How does yeah. this exist? Yeah, it's just, it's just for, for the history of animation, like, th this is just an important book to have, man. The first time I ever saw any Akira anything was in a comic scene magazine, you know, and it was like manga, anime comes to America. You right. know, it's a variation of the Biff Bam Pow comics aren't just for kids, but it was the, the idea that this was a mainstream kind of thing. Oh, I dude. don't think they had any idea how the impact that it was really going to have. Yeah. You know, like the, the fact that a book like this is still being just sought after, you know, decades later, that would have been in the late look 80s whenever I saw that. Oh, man, these are dark. I don't know how well they'll show up on screen, but they look amazing. He, yeah, he, he actually said even uh, in the context stuff at the beginning that like these printed a little dark for his taste. Because I think there's like a light shining through like when they mm -hmm. record it for animation. Look at that. It's like a Murakami piece, right? I don't even remember that. Yeah. When oh, there's your taped up um, pan. You had, had, a, had to tape a piece of paper for that pan. Yeah. So cool. And then I wonder how that works when it comes to the acetate stage. Tape two acetates? Like, where, do we see the tape? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I am so in love with these kind of fine pencil lines. Yeah. How much does this make you think of Frank Whiteley? Yeah. You know, like thinking about how, how precise he's gotten with his pencil. Yeah, man. And like knowing this kind that, of shit. you know, Akira means a lot to him, too. Yeah. Because because we asked uh, like he actually answered that question that we had looking through one of his books and he and he like and we interviewed him he was like yeah you asked if I used like a point zero three millimeter he's like no I don't I just use one weight blah 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 what a cool book <laughs> Is that like a dead I'm gonna have to dig out I, I, if I have the comic scene that has that article I'm gonna have to dig it out because I'm kind of curious to see like. What are they saying about this in like 88, 89? You know, whenever it's really kind of ramping up. Like, yeah. like Epic would have been publishing the manga in color. You know, like it was such a different time period then. And again, to think like here we are decades later and it's still being studied. You know, spending that time out there in uh, Tokyo with Jeff Darrow and hearing his stories about like, you know, Otomo. He, Jeff has his photo. It's Otomo Mobius... Rintaro and the Wachowskis all chilling. And there are Otomo books where, where he's he's drawn like some Robert Crumb stuff in the background. There are pieces where he does like his Ode to Mobius. There are like these five, six creators, Miyazaki is a part of it, where it's like they are they're the untouchables. You know, they're all together and they all have this like amazing respect for one another. And they're just they're just different. Like like they're the all stars. They're they're the dudes that like, they just have that extra thing that is unteachable. And he's he, I mean he's one of them. I've been talking more and more lately about like I in my head for whatever reason I've been thinking what are these ten most influential comics or whatever. And Akira's on that list yeah. here in America. Yeah, you know it it just changed everything in so many ways. And that influence, 
I mean, it continues to grow. It's not just still present. It continues to grow. It's true. Yeah, these these guys that are really one of ones, you know, to do what Otomo has done, like, I don't know who you'd even point at. It's comparable. Yeah. yeah Phenomenal they, book, man. I'm so glad you picked that one up, Ed. Had to, man. Like, that, like, that was, there was one mission while out there, and I could not come up. Like, this one, this one, it's on the carry-on bag. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like, I didn't <laughs> ship this. <laughs> This did not even get checked. You know, we, we look at comics in so through so many different lenses. And whenever I look at this, whenever I touch it, like, this is me, the book fan, being yeah. like, oh, this is so, I just want to have my yeah, hands yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, I, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't stop messing with it. It's, yeah, uh, it comes in this plastic bag. Really impressive. And everybody always recommends keep it in the plastic bag because this is like some weird plasticky kind of kind of cover, uh, cover, like, uh, what do you call that, man? Like a book cover. Mm-hmm. And it just gets damaged real easy, man. So, like, as fans of books, that's a good one. But I feel like, you know, pretty soon we're going to have to maybe do something like that on the channel. Yes. Yeah, man. We have an embarrassing... <laughs> Foreshadowing, right? Previewing. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to Cartoonist Kayfabe if you haven't already, because we've got some good ones coming up. We we pulled a heist on Japan <laughs> and, and, and mined so many natural resources out of that country, man, that, that uh, we have episodes for days... That we have to uh, create, man, for the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, dude. That was the whole point, dude. It was, a, it was a work vacation, man. I was on that hunt every single day, and I had key people on that hunt with me to point me in directions, and we came back with some really, really great stuff. But this was the one. It had to ride shotgun with me all the way uh, across the marble back to Pittsburgh. Good to go? I am. Yeah, man. A lot of inspiration right there. All right, guys. Uh, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there, man. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, back in print. If you missed it the first time, pick it up now wherever you buy books. The Plain Janes, still available everywhere. Bunch of disgruntled uh, high school artists that caused some disruption in their town when they start doing public art without anyone's permission. So pick that up for the young artist in your life and join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where you can see a lot more of my comics making and art and you can download a bunch of my out of print zines and mini comics. Red Room, the antisocial network, Red Room trigger warnings. These are my newest efforts, my newest projects, man. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game and each of these books contains four complete horror stories. Working on the next round right now and I am serializing those comics on my Patreon on. Hit up my link tree. You're going to be able to get to all those destinations. Jimmy, tell the people what else we have out there, man. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, perfect gifts for the Cartoonist Kayfaber in your life at our spread shop. Those links are also below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, Jimmy will be on our way. Read more manga.